all-knowing, you know, and uh, it means that uh, when you said all, all powerful, that means in his power, everything be at his Yeah. Yeah. So in that case, what we see in a, na in a natural world, we have a very good question, right? What we see, do you think it makes sense? Somebody is smarter than us. It does make sense to you? I think here was uh, It makes sense that it could be. It doesn't make sense that it has to be. Okay. So what what are the things you are after in, in terms of attribute? Do you have a certain idea that create whatever I am thinking, you must be all powerful, all knowing. Are you are you attributing those things to I'm, that? I'm thinking of him as being you know omniscient, omnipotent, omnipotent. So in Islam we have that same understanding. Yeah. Okay. So therefore often many people become agnostics. Yeah. Because when they rationalize with the faith, they realize this is not the God they are looking for. Because it doesn't, you falsify, when you make the falsification, you don't come to that point. But yet, in Islamic God, you can falsify and come to a conclusion, no, it, this is the perfect God I am after. So that's why Allah saying, <coughs> Allah eliminate the impossibility, say, where they created of nothing or they themselves are the creator right mm -hmm. so allah is saying can something come from nothing or can self-creation possible we know both of them absurd idea so there must be someone but some being so if someone can make something out of nothing he must be automatically all powerful uh, yeah. and therefore he he should not be like creation he's unlike creation and then that that being must possess the attribute of intelligence and he must know first and he must have the will to bring everything into existence yeah. right so now that being we call allah and that's why allah defined himself can you open yeah allah defined himself let's look at that see i i thought the quran shouldn't be translated into english arabic is the perfect spoken word of god i agree with you this gives you a meaning I agree with you. Okay. This gives you a meaning to understand. But Quran cannot be translated. Means Quran, of course, Allah revealed in Arabic language. It is translated so that at least other nations can understand the message of it and yeah. then slowly learn it. But even someone like me who doesn't believe in the God, for me to even hold the Quran, mm -hmm. that used to, people used to think that was bad. No, but if it is in Arabic, uh, under like uh, yeah, translation you can touch it. Yeah. Um, and the kind of they used to think that was a bad thing to do, you know. To, yeah. To give uh, people that don't believe the Quran. Yeah. No, but Quran is the word of God, and it is, it is not belongs to Muslim community. I'll tell you why. The Quran address. Yeah. yeah. Quran is not a just a word for Muslim community, right? Yeah. And Allah confirms it here, right? Re you start with. Oh, mankind, mankind. mankind. So yeah. when is mankind? It's not Muslim. Yeah, Muslim, non-Muslim, everybody included. Yeah. So Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, addressing everybody. And he's saying, indeed, we have created you from male and a female and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of God is the most righteous of you. Indeed, God is knowing and acquainted. Why does it say we? We is a royal plural Allah used. So it's like when when her majesty, they use... So is that God saying we? Allah, yeah, Allah, Allah, saying Allah we. yeah. These are royal... Uh, Allah singular. Uh, Allah is singular, yes. Singular. Yeah, yeah, that's why, look. This is the definition of God. And you will agree, look. Say he is God, who's one. Yeah. God, the eternal refuge, means someone sustain everything, yet he doesn't need sustenance. Yeah. Like he provide rain life and everything yet he doesn't need rain oxygen life all of those things if you stop those things we can't survive yeah so and then he neither begets nor born this is a reputation so this is an incorrect def definition of god because god is watching people attributed him as son so allah is revealing this quran and including telling people of the community that no I don't have a father, neither have a son. And then Allah is saying, nor is there to him any equivalent. It means you cannot compare anything with God, the creator. And another place, another place, another place. 
Ya. Yeah. Allah saying laisa kamislihi shay, ya. There is nothing like unto him and he is hearing and seeing. Means he can hear everything and see everything. Means now now the conversation me and you having he can hear. So he doesn't need an intermediary to help him to hear this. Right? So therefore we reject those who say okay god is too far this object help us to reach there we say you are taking the attributes of god away yeah. because god is all perfect maximally perfect and he has the attribute of seeing and hearing so therefore it's a blasphemy against god to take his attributes out of, from him does that clarify yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you think, um, Does that make sense to you now? Yeah, yeah. Do, do you think um, uh, the different uh, Hanbali, Hanafi, uh, in four schools, Hanbali, Hanafi? Yeah, I think these, these are. Do you think they contradict each other? No, 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 no. What? Because they are. They say different things, don't they? I think what we are talking about faith. If we look at Islamic creed and belief, yeah, and then we have practice. There's two things. Yeah. How to how to wash our face how to action and we have differences of opinion but then again all those differences are approved by god uh, the prophet himself yeah okay but that shouldn't matter should it that shouldn't matter that, that, that's the side belief, issue because he's not uh, muhammad wasn't god no muhammad no just a man. exactly exactly and muhammad confirmed peace be upon him he said look look at that very plain and simple for everyone to understand right can you read this verse uh, say, I am only a man like you, to whom uh, has been revealed that your God is one God, so whoever would hope for the meeting with his God, let him do righteous work and not associate in the worship of his Lord anyway. Simple plain. Muhammad is a man, yeah. but he's a messenger. But there were only two miracles. He went to the Dome of the Rock, and then he received the Quran. So he yeah. did have two miracles. Yeah. He has... The night journey? He has plenty of miracles. Okay. Allah assisted him. So there are some of them timeless and some of the one of them are timeless and all of them are time bound means like Moses split the sea. Yeah. It was a time bound miracle. It's not a timeless. We can't see the sea split now. Yeah. Jesus miracles are time bound, not yeah. timeless. But Muhammad Islam has both of them timeless and time bound. Yeah. What are the time bound? So he uh, healed one of his companion in in the day of Khaybar. His name Ali ibn Abi Talib. Mm. So he said, I will give the flag. Is that hadith or Quran? No, it's in the hadith. That's in the hadith. Yeah. So I will give the flag to someone who will love by Allah yeah. and his messenger, and he will love Allah and his messenger. Okay. So on the following day, all of the companions came to him and waiting who Prophet gives the flag to. Mm. And then Prophet asked for, where is Ali? And they said, he has an eye issue, eye ailment. So Prophet asked companion to bring Ali to me and then Prophet touched on his eyesight and it was healed. Allah healed, Allah healed right? Now these are time bound, yep. right? We have many instances, you know, one in one point of time, the food is short, he touched it, food has been increased. So you can find those time bound miracle, but the timeless miracle at present for you, me to reflect on is the Quran. Yeah. First point is as a skeptic person yourself like yeah a book must need to make a claim that is from god very simple thing yes the book itself making a claim every other chapter this is tanzilum min rabbil alamin this is a revelation from allah wa innahu la tanzilu rabbil alamin nazala bihi ruhul amin ala qalbika litakuna min al munzirin that allah look this is the verse in chapter number 26 Allah define himself it's how uh, Shura. This sure, is sure. a Shura, yeah. Look, indeed, the Quran is the revelation of the Lord of the worlds, yeah. The trustworthy uh, uh, spirit Gabriel has brought it down to who? Into the heart of Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why heart? Means memorization. Yeah. So the Prophet is memorizing at the same time, he is making it public by giving it to who the companion mm. the companion he, he couldn't read or write, could he? no he couldn't so he's memorizing it and therefore the companion is memorizing it 
and then he is asking, okay, recite me back. Exactly the way, the way Gabriel taught him. So he taught the companion same way. And companion memorized it, understood it. And once prophet is satisfied, he said, okay, teach the same way to the next generation. Mm. And the same tradition, we kept it today. Yeah. That's why if you pick four children or let's say we do an experiment. We find 10 children from maybe eight years old or nine years old, different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Quran is the only book in the face <laughs> of the earth which memorized by millions, yeah. millions, can millions. You recite it? I can recite it, but I'm not a memorizer of the Quran. You found the, but you, I have a name, somebody can? Hafiz. 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 Hafiz, someone who can memorize. Would you like to be Hafiz? Uh, I mean, I have, I memorize portion of it, mm. not big portion, but small chunk from every parts of the Quran. Mm. But I have family members who memorize. Oh, right. I have my paternal cousin, two of them. They memorize cover to cover. So if you like make a dot mistake or a, a word mistake or a letter mistake, the right. straight away correct you. Yeah. And is that, is that not a good thing? Is that something? You, is that something? You it's a good try thing. It's a good thing. So you try because to God message will be intact, yeah. protect and preserved. Mm. And that is why Allah promised in the Quran, within the Quran itself, Allah said, "Inna nahnu nazzalna zikra wa inna lahu lahafizun." So I am paraphrasing that Allah saying, I will protect this book. Yep. Protect this book from what? From losing out or change or another place. Allah said, La batilu min wala min 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 hamid. That falsehood cannot come from any angle mm. because Allah sealed it. So therefore, it tells a big information to the whole mankind. Mm. The Allah has not leave you alone without guiding you. Your guidance is with you. Now question is, as a skeptical person, what makes you to believe that Quran is indeed of word of God? What makes me believe that it is, mm. uh, is how perfectly it's written, mm -hmm. it's poetry. Um, By the way, it's not poetry. I thought it was poetry. Or it reads like poetry. It reads like poetry, but it's, it's beyond poetry. Yeah. It's beyond poetry. It's yeah. beyond because even the, the time of Arabia, these are the best people in literacy. Yeah. When they heard the Quran, they said, Basha. This is not word of a human being. Like imagine if someone who's expert in that language, he suddenly say, this is beyond our comprehension. Another way I'm saying, that's not, that's a supernatural thing. Yeah, yeah. Is it not a special in English? So the Quran, nah, English. You you don't have that features in English, but, but you have the message. For example, the Quran, a proper Quran. I'm not going to do it, but you can't hold below the waist. You shouldn't step over it. Mm. It should be kept higher. Is that not the same for? Yeah. English? So basically, you have to be respectful. You don't touch it on your feet. Yeah. Is a disrespect, but you have to touch it with evolution, with purified. Because when you're done, there are certain way you have to clean yourself yeah. we call it tahara which is cleanliness yeah and allah said uh, allah loves those who clean himself yeah and once you are clean then you can touch it in arabic yeah and then you recite it so let's say you thought i did speak arabic mm -hmm. you would then hand me a quran in arabic even though you don't know i've washed myself because i've come down the street so basically we don't give out arabic quran you wouldn't do that no i wouldn't do that because i don't even know if you thought i spoke arabic no, if you speak Arabic and if, if you are clean, I can get you one copy. Yeah. But majority of the people, you know, they would like to know English Quran, right? Yeah. Because they don't, they don't know how to read Arabic. Yeah? yeah. So that's why we share this translated. And you know, as, as we agree that when you translate it, it doesn't taste the same, you know? Lose it's, it's, it's lose the features. It so has... I would want people to know some of it. Yeah, of course, of course. But translation is there. At least you get the main message. Yeah. The main message is Allah is the creator, which is not like creation. So Allah is saying, shun and reject false worship. Allah also tells us that there are other type of desire have, you know, people have different type of desire and that desire can be also be a form of worship. People worship money, people worship Netflix, you know, ex exaggeration of love that lead you to worship. So Allah is saying, you know, all those things, false ideas and false notion you have, you have to reject that first. And that's why in our Shahada, yeah, there's one God for God. Why? Muhammad is prophet. First, you have to reject the false idea. Otherwise, 
if you have the false idea and the true belief, you will be always in chaos in your mind. So first you reject, then you accept. I, I think is it, is it, uh, you, you are close to, the, you are already, you believe that faith anyway, I can see it. Well, I've studied Islam a lot. Yeah. Um, is, is it uh, in the Quran or is it in the Hadith? Um, so a man is beating his wife, when, uh, the Prophet hears about it, and he wants for the man to be beaten, hit because he's hit his wife. And then God says, no, uh, you can't do that because he's allowed to. Does that make sense? Okay. So, <coughs> the problem Muhammad wanted to do one thing and then God said, no, this is the rules. Uh, but also Muhammad banned slavery, I think, and I think he banned the beating of women. Yes, it's all, all of them, yes. But God said, no, actually, don't punish a man for beating a woman. So, life. few points here. So, Quran, let me start with slavery first. Yeah. The Quran, the slavery was prevalent before the yeah. advent of yeah. Prophet Muhammad. Yeah, of so, how Prophet said, you know, Prophet encouraged highly. Even in the Quran, Allah said one of the greatest reward is freeing a slave. Yeah. And one of the companion, which his name is Abu Bakr, yeah. he was freeing many of the slaves. Yeah. So, it was Muslimun who actually holding the trait of freeing the slave. Yeah. Number two, those people who embraced Islam, they were in Jahiliya, which is the darkness. So in the darkness time, they were abusing, you know, they were bad people. Yeah. But when Quran started to come, they stopped those things. Mm -hmm. Another teaching you will find, like Allah mentioned, That they used to bury the daughter alive. Heinous crime. Yeah. Yeah. But when Allah sent message, message through the Quran, mm -hmm. they stopped it. Yeah. Those same people. So. If you apply all those things, this was prevalent in the Arabian community. Yeah. Remember that time, they have no guidance. Yeah. The moment the guidance come... But I'm saying in this case, yeah. it seems like Muhammad wanted to do what I would say was the right thing. Yeah, so beat the man to hit, beat his wife, and then Allah said, no, you can't do that. So, allowed to. Uh, to me, that's the wrong thing. So Muhammad is doing the right thing. God doing the right so thing. the clear hadith is saying, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi never hit his woman. Yeah, Khadija. Khadija or Aisha or no one. He yeah. didn't never touch anybody. There was some polemics. They say Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam beaten his wife. And the, they use the word called Daraba. Daraba also has many meanings. Yeah. And they translated is hitting. Yeah. But Daraba also meaning, you know, is also apply in, we call it uh, Tayamum. Tayamum means when you are unwell and you cannot do evolution, Instead of evolution, you use soil to clean yourself and you touch the soil and you wipe your hand and mouth, right? So that place is also has been used Daraba. Yeah. That means you're not hitting the, you're just yeah. touching it. Yeah. So, and then we found in the life of Prophet, he never hit the woman. No. Therefore, and it, he didn't like people that did. Exactly. Yeah. So, so he was saying the one, uh, the best among you, are the one who's best to your wife. Can you imagine? Mm. So your wife should give you certificate. Who are you? Mm. So look at the teaching. Mm. He stopped the, uh, 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 the the female killing. Then he given the inheritance was not. Women never get used to get inheritance. Yeah. Prophet Muhammad yeah. some come and he you know offer share for the woman inheritance and Allah revealed. Men are the caretaker of our women. Mm. You should provide them, care them. Mm. These are your daughter, this is your mother. Have love and compassion. So I think the idea is some polemical understanding hijacked <laughs> some of some of uh, Islamic ideology and they interpreted, misinterpreted yeah. those. Yeah. And this gone for, for a very long time. And now Muslim of course realize that our religion has been hijacked. Well, I, I think, I think do you agree on that? I do, because when I've studied the history of it, yep. it seems like Muhammad uh, wanted to punish many other wives, uh, didn't want slavery or to stone people. But then when you look at Muslim states, Saudi Arabia, etc., they do a lot of things which I think that Muhammad wouldn't have said yes to. Or for example, take Khadija, she was a wealthy businesswoman. Yes, yes, she was. Uh, ran caravans. Yes. She was independent. She yes, she was. Muhammad. Yes. 
yet in you know Saudi Arabia wouldn't couldn't drive until recently. Yeah. Whereas the Prophet's wife would have been a woman who probably would have driven. If you know what I mean? It was an independent woman, wealthy, etc. Exactly. So that a, that shows that 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 shows Prophet allowed the woman has. But what, what do you think about that? that in a lot of Muslim countries, no, it seem to. Be I, okay, I think let me agree with you on proposition. Muslim not always following Islam perfectly. Yeah. Islam is perfect. Yeah. I make that point clear. But Muslim country often you will not find they are following everything. But yet in Saudi Arabia there are a lot of good things there. There are a portion of the things maybe you not find there. Even Muslim we also say okay this is not right you should change it right. Yeah. But end of the day, Islam is perfect, not the human being. These are the human being following this religion. So what, what do you think God thinks about stoning uh, adulterers or not letting women drive? What do you think God himself thinks about that? So first of all, when we look at the punishment, when Allah defined punishment, what's your name? Joe. Joe. Sorry, it's what's your name? Joe, Aziz. 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 Yeah, Joe, I tell you, this road, Parley Road. Don't go and fight in the Parley Road. Mm. If you do so, I will punish you badly. Mm. I have tell you one thousand times. After hearing my command, mm. you go Parley Road and you fight. Yeah. Do you deserve that punishment? Depends what the punishment is. Okay. I have already mentioned to you that punishment will get. But punishment? yes. What is the punishment? Yeah. What punishment is, means, is let's say, let's say, whipping? let's say I will, I will push you, I'll, I'll make a medium to high range punishment, okay? Okay, okay, okay. okay. As a person of sincerity, first of all, you should not even reject God because he's your own maker. Why should you do that? Yeah. Do you, what do you do when your office boss tells you? You don't, you don't argue with him. People make mistakes. People make mistakes. Allah said, I will forgive you. So in Islam, if you look at the Sharia, Sharia comes to prevent people. Yeah. First of all, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Alcohol. Allah tells us alcohol. Allah said in Sharia that I will protect the intellect of human being. Allah said he will protect your intellect. How do Allah will protect your intellect? He tells you you eat good food. Yeah. What you can do, Allah tells you eat good food, pray, worship, do good thing, help one another, all these things. And stay away from lie, cheat and all these things. Mm. That's what you are doing. Externally, Allah also make jurisdiction that alcohol is prohibited so that you don't drink it. So Allah is protecting you by prohibiting alcohol. Because if Allah allowed alcohol and also say, okay, I want to protect your human mind, it will be contradictory, paradoxical. Yeah. Everything you see in Islam, Sharia, is goes to prevention policy. For example, when, yeah. when I say, can I, can I shake a hand with a woman? I say no, because if I do so, the next thing I would say, come, okay, let me give you a hug. Then, okay, come, you know, that's how you, look, Allah, Allah cre no, you may not feel it, but Allah know, created everybody. Yeah. And the Quran is guidance for everyone, not for me, individually. The question is, if Allah tells you, first point is, Allah tells you with the guidance, you shouldn't reject first point. And Allah tells you not to do, why we are arrogant enough to commit that? That is the things we need to consider. We can go about the stoning verses, Rajam. Yeah? We can go verses, we can look at the Sharia and how this court, how the jurists say it. I can give you all this jurisdiction and you will finally yeah, conclude that. Yeah, yeah. yeah fair. And you will conclude, you know why you will conclude? It's a fair. After going through, you know, we're talking about these laws. These laws have so many grounds to execute this punishment. It is rare to find jazz fine to execute. Why? Because they cannot. Sharia is so flexible. You cannot punish someone until proven guilty. You know that? Yes. That's it. The principle of that. The question is. For me, allowing that punishment ever, that's wrong. It's not a flexible way. No, I think what you, what you are thinking about, because we have a Western mindset. Yeah. And it does, we see things in 
how it has been dealt in another territory. It doesn't matter. I, it, does, it is yeah. a Western mindset, but I don't yeah. think that makes it wrong. No, I, I'm not saying that. I'm not, I'm, in the most abstract I'm not, sense. No, I'm, I'm saying if you look at on a fair point of view, you will find it fair. If you don't agree or if I don't agree, that doesn't necessarily make it wrong. Allah said there are things you like, not good for you. Mm. But there are things, there are things that you would uh, love which is bad for you. Yeah. yeah. And things this is dislike, good for you. Why, why do you think we believe in God? I mean... Do you think you have a choice? No, I don't, uh, because uh, there are no other choice to believe yeah. in God. Because why? Because I exist, creator exists, simple things. We don't, we, you know what? I have realized with the atheist, I find very inconsistency mm -hmm. about their approach, mm -hmm. not about their belief. I respect them, mm -hmm. but I find inconsistency. Do you know what inconsistency I find? Gotcha. Everything in their life, they use their rationality, normal, simple, sensory abilities to conclude. The moment comes, God come, then they create an impossible scenario to disregard God. That's why I find it inconsistent. Why is that inconsistent? Huh? Why is that interesting? Because you make an impossible scenario. First of all, you don't normally think like that way in your day-to-day -day life. When it comes to God, when the God is self-evident truth. That, what's the impossible scenario? So for example, he will go to okay, then who comes pre-eternal? What was there? Because all these are speculation. We don't know. Yeah. When you're talking about those phenomena, we are thinking on our logic. And that logic goes like that, logic goes like that. But what I am saying is everything in our day to day life, when you cross the road, when you, you do simple reasoning to come to a conclusion, mm. Allah is telling that his self-evident truth means you exist, Allah exists, simple. Creation cannot come from nothing, simple. We make things over complicated, that's all. Okay, well, go How about... Um, coming to the fold of Islam. Because you have that, you know the Prophet Muhammad you can't deny he's a messenger of God. And neither you can deny Allah is the creator of God. I, you know, I respect the Quran as beautiful, Islam is beautiful, but there are very, very technical, complicated arguments to why. So I, I've done philosophy at Oxford. Uh, very, you know, too long to go into here why I don't believe in God. Um, but, but I, I respect I you. Think in there's me. a lot of truth. In the, in the no, I think what we say, the book is truth. Do you know why? Because Allah's name is Al Haq. Al Haq means the absolute truth. Yeah. So whatever comes from that absolute truth is truth. Yeah. So therefore, our subjective things of understanding of this is wrong and perception does not necessarily make it Islam wrong. It's just our comprehension of how we see it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, the the Muslim theologians, Kalam, also scientists like Ibn Ibn Hayyim and people like that, they were some of the best theologians ever been. Exactly. But, no, I mean, before theology and Quran talks to in a simple mind. Yeah. You know, Quran poses many challenges. Yeah. Allah tells us, make a fly. Can you make a fly? Even a fly snatch a food from your plate. Can you? Retrieve it back from the fly. No. Look, Allah, we don't have to go to Haitam and Ibn Sina to complex. They, these are for maybe some people who are confused. I say these arguments are for confused people. Okay. Simple mind, uncorrupted mind, unclouded mind, always go for simple. Okay, I cross the road. I see man, that man cannot come from nothing. When I wear a jacket, I know that jacket was not formed automatically. It has a maker. I don't see it, doesn't make it. It has no creator. And I, I feel like sometimes we are not truthful to ourselves. That's my personal understanding. But but you know, you, you've been studying and uh, I don't want to delve on the, too much on perspective of Sharia, but I can give you a general understanding. The Sharia is to prevent prevention policy. Yeah. I, I think I struggle with this Sharia. No, I, I mean... And the problem of evil. Problem of evil is, is uh, nah, 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 I think problem of evil is very basic problem. I'll tell you why it's a very basic problem. It's about how the, we think ourselves. If you think there is an hereafter, 
then that problem is gone. And why, why, why create the world at all? Sorry, if, if, if we go to paradise afterwards and we have eternal life. Now Allah said he will test you. That's his plan. He said, if he said he will test you, then the absolute justice is not possible here. We just simply just, we know that. Not everybody will be rewarded for all the good things they have done. And not, not all the criminal will receive the full punishment. So therefore reward and punishment required for an absolute justice. Therefore we need hereafter. Then if we have the hereafter, then any evil committed against you, it will be Allah said he will repay it back. Do you agree? That's a good point. Good point. Think about it, you know. Allah is calling you. There is a reason why we met together. Mm -hmm. And I want you to think simple. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we overthink mm -hmm. and we and that's why uh, the scholar said, you know, sometimes you have clouded fitra. Because our brain, like if you scan it, we'll find different parts of information comes in. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we need to think what yeah. is in there. Mm -hmm. We have to maybe check through. And that's why we say guidance. Allah said that hudam wa shifa wa bushralin mumini this is guidance is a shifa means cure so you know cure normally doctors use it for medicine purpose how come they use cure like for example if you go to yeah i mean exactly like for example if you go to a pharmacy if you ask them simple i want to stop lying can you give me a tablet there's no tablet there there's no injection there there's no suppository there then how can you heal? Once you know there is Allah, and that's why you should, Allah said, fear me, why? So that even if you don't know anyone seeing you, I am seeing you. On that note, my brother, you know, you know, you, you, you can watch that, you know. Yeah, well, that yeah I'll, 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 I'll share with you, yeah? Yeah. Um,